Somebody says, um, Jeffrey510CCV3 says, love your vids in and pups. I've got a blue fawn that carries cocoa and cream. Is it rare for a fawn dog to show 10 points? No. Um, not, no. Um, but it's a blue fawn, not a fawn. That's why it's showing it. Um, if it was a, God, that's my stuff here. Come on, don't do this to me. Sorry, folks. So if it was a straight fawn, it wouldn't show the fan, the, 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 uh, the tan points because it's a blue fawn, that's the reason why. And I've lost my, there we go. Does a, okay, Christy McDonald says, does a brindle carrier always express brindle? Can a sable dog carry brindle? So, answer the first question, the last question first. A sable dog will not carry brindle, otherwise it wouldn't be sable. So a sable dog is a dog that's A-Y-A-T, and it will have kind of black ticking uh, on it, kind of a black sheen to it, black ticking, which makes it a sable. Um, does a brindle carrier always express brindle? Yes, but sometimes it's very hard to see it. Sometimes a brindle dog can have just a faintest little bit of brindle on its, typically on its haunches. Um, and, and of course, a dog that carries a copy of brindle won't give that to all of its offspring, so not all of its offspring will be brindle. Uh, but every great once in a while it happens. Yeah, it can, yeah. Did to a friend of ours. Yeah. Someone says, Michael, Marana says, I love your glasses. Well, thank you. That was probably the day you were wearing my glasses. It is. My reading glasses. Just want to know what was your setup for auction concentrator, uh, liters per minute and auction percentage. Um, so the answer to that is, is the higher, well look, auction concentrators that you buy are typically set up for human beings and they're going to have flow rates up to, you know, eight liters per minute, six liters per minute. You don't need any, think of it this way, the amount of oxygen that you need for an animal, whether it's a human being or a puppy, is based on their weight. So if you're providing oxygen for somebody like me at 200 pounds, it might be at four or five liters per minute. But if you're talking about a puppy that weighs a pound, obviously it's gonna be a heck of a lot less. Consequently, the lowest setting is more than enough. So the one liter per minute setting is fine. And the higher you have the liters per minute settings, the lower the oxygen concentration will be. So the majority of units will do pretty well at low concentration. Cheap units will not do well at a higher concentration. So put them at one liter per minute and get the most out of them. Uh, and it says, is it, is, it, is it okay for us to shout out from, for you guys, uh, Marion French is based in the Philippines? Sure, good luck out there. Somebody else, Tammy, is asking, Sibo says, can you explain this new trending Husky Frenches? Hmm. What do they mean? Fluffies. I have no idea. Ebony Newbie says, would a lilac trindle produce a brindle pup? Yep, sure would. So a lilac trindle is a dog that is little C-O, little C-O, little D, little D, makes it a platinum. K-N-K-K-B got a copy of brindle. And so you would expect half the puppies to get the brindle gene from mum, and assuming that dad doesn't have brindle, then half your offspring would have a copy of Brindle and they would show it. Um, so this is after I put a video up about dog seam and story for multiple AIs. And, and Carlos says, if you want to prepare for story for years, like if I'd like to have a dog pup for the next five years, he's asking, what do you do? The answer is you can't use chill, fresh chilled semen. You have to freeze it. So you have to do liquid nitrogen, it has to be put down to like minus 180 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, stored in a nitrogen tank, stored the right way. There's a whole different process. Um, I do have a nitrogen tank, and at some point I'll probably do a video on this, but the answer is, is if you want to archive a dog, i.e. stored semen for many, many, many years, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road, when the dog obviously will not be here any longer, then the only way to do that that I know of is to, uh, is to uh, store it in liquid nitrogen. But flash you, freezer. you sent chilled semen across to... Yes, but that semen that you, you know, you can pull the chilled semen and, and keep it alive for 10 days. That well, can be well, done. with your deal. Yeah, 10 days. You've invented Yes, yeah. 10 days. Not yeah. not 10 years. 
though. Yeah, that's the difference. So yeah. anytime that somebody wants to archive something, when we say archive, we mean store it for long, long oh, term. Okay. Yeah, that, that's when you've got to use the, the uh, liquid nitrogen. Uh, 23 Tragic says, Hey Jay, I've just got confirmation that my first time mother will have 12 puppies. What should I be worried about or, or uh, look out for? Well, make sure you have at least three or four feeding tubes and... Yeah, well the first thing I'd say is, is, is what kind of dog is this? Yeah. This might yeah. be a Labrador, in which case it's quite normal. But if it's a Frenchie... Frenchie, you got yourself a handful. Yeah, and you're liable to have puppies early, so limit her activity you know, yeah. at least two weeks before due date, do her temperature check a week beforehand to see what her temperature drop is. Oop, because yeah. that many puppies and a French bulldog. Move your head a little bit, see if they can see you. Hey, hey. Don't do that. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's not going to. Yeah, no, this, that's fine. No. There we go. That's fine. That's fine. Anyway, so um, just fun. take precautions. Make sure you've got by our. Um, traveling incubator because you're going to need that if you if it's a french bulldog and you've got that many babies you're going to have tiny babies that you need that traveling incubator that is great for having at home for puppies that are too small and uh oxygen tank get you an oxygen tank just prepare We're yourself yeah 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 just prepare yourself so yeah. so let, I, i'm going to back this up so a little bit if? And back this up a little bit because yeah. because the, the question was asked what should we what should be you know what are we in for so so let's just I'm telling them you are and I, I, I you are and I'm just I'm just going to paraphrase what you said so the first thing is is you know it depends on whether this is a dog that normally has a large litter a big dog 50 60 70 80 pound dog that can handle 12 puppies that's yeah, one thing yeah, versus a, a 25 pound or a 20 pound French story. bulldog with 12 pu puppies in it you know if that's the case if you've got a 30 pound dog with 12 puppies in it you are gonna you need to be set up because you are gonna have some struggles right Go to www.mybreedersupply.com and prepare yourself with the heated whelping system the traveling incubator uh, our puppy care kit has everything you need that uh, for feeding tubes you know just and if you need extra feeding tubes let them know that when you're ordering that so yeah so let's, let's talk about what, what why do you need all this stuff so the problem gets to be that when you have that many puppies they tend to be smaller puppies oh, yeah. and smaller puppies for instance in Frenchie world or probably any world unless me you talk chihuahuas when you've got puppies that are four or five ounces, those puppies are going to struggle and you are going to need to have some special equipment, which is going to be, just like Tammy said, an incubator. So our traveling portable incubator is a great product. They'll take puppies to and from the vet and you can use it 24-7 in your house. Yeah. You will probably need an oxygen concentrator because you are going to have some puppies that are going to be struggling and there's nothing like pure oxygen for puppies that are having lung issues. And large litters tend to come early. So be oh, very yeah. careful that you don't take this any earlier than you need to. Right. If you've got that's that many I, puppies, I'd be waiting until you actually start to see that's physical That's why I said labor. limit her exercise. So that's another good point. Let her Tammy's, out to potty, put her back up two weeks before due date because... Tammy's saying don't have yeah. this dog, if it's a very active dog, don't have it bouncing active around. Or not active, don't have it jumping off the bed, jumping off furniture, especially in, in that in last crate. week. Yep. Put her in the crate to keep her still. Take her out on a leash when you take her out for a walk, she doesn't go running squirrels. The reason for that is to keep her from going into labor early. Yeah, or dislodging a puppy with that many oh, in there. Gosh, right. And, yes. and having and having a placenta tear. Right. So what can happen here is is that you have a lot of puppies on board. You don't take the advice that we're doing. The the dog is an active dog. She's running around, she gets a placental tear. That puppy now dies inside her and oh, it now causes the entire yeah. She now has the whole litter early. She had somebody the other day. Had a, had a litter at 51 days. There's no way that you're gonna, there's nothing that you can do afterwards for puppies that are born at 51 days. They are all gonna die. Unfortunately, that's just, a, you're just not gonna save them. If you possibly had put this dog under bed rest, you may have avoided, I'm not saying you would have done, but you could have possibly avoided the placental tear, the puppy that died, and the consequential early pregnancy that then he lost all the puppies. So be prepared for this. 
Um, and then Tammy mentioned feeding tubes. Absolutely, you can bet your bottom dollar that if you've got 12 Frenchie puppies, that you're gonna have some in there that are gonna be small and they will need to be tube fed and you will yeah. not be able to bottle feed them. Right, right. Yeah. And when you're bottle feeding a puppy, it takes at least 15, 20 minutes to do this. But if you're tube feeding, it takes a minute. So here's the next thing that, that Tammy's alluding to. 12 puppies, day one, mum's milk's not gonna look after 12 puppies. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. It's gonna take, I mean, she may, but the chances are is you're gonna have to supplement milk with 12 puppies, unless this is like a Labrador or something. So if you're gonna supplement, what do you do? Well, you need to have a couple of things. You need to have powdered goat's milk or, or, or real straight goat's milk. You need to have a, a you can use human bot baby bottles to feed with. But you also need to have a feeding tube for what Tammy said. First off is because they can't take a bottle because they're too weak. Right. Second thing is if you've got to feed 12 puppies every three hours because mum's milk's not coming. You're not getting any sleep. How long does it going to take you to feed 12 puppies? Oh gosh, times 15 minutes at least. Yeah, exactly. That's three hours. <laughs> That's three hours. Which means that when you just finish feeding the last puppy, you're going to feed the next. You've got to start again. Your whole you 24 7 you're feeding puppies versus what Tammy said if you fed 12 puppies with a feeding tube 10 15 minutes you'd be done right and then you go back and get your rest and yeah. be prepared for another couple hours getting up so, so what we do in a situation like this is we go to, we do our last beating of the day at midnight set the alarm clock for 3 o'clock or 3 30 in the morning get up and feed the whole lot again which takes about 15 minutes so 3 30 we, we, we get up we're back in bed at 3 45 and we get up again at 7 or 8 and we've just interrupted our sleep for 15 minutes during the night and that's livable you can actually do that for quite some time and not end up with a divorce <laughs> but, uh, but if but you got to be prepared so good question long answer very important that you get prepared if you're prepared then you will oh, probably yeah. do great. But and everybody should be prepared, really. That's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly right. Because you always don't know about the what ifs. Think of the what ifs. What if this happened? What if that happened? Be prepared. So what Tammy's saying is, is that you should buy from us our heated whelping system, our incubator, and our, our puppy care kit, and very soon the auction concerts that we offer. All right, that's yeah. a long one right there, yeah. folks. Thanks for watching. www mybreedersupply.com That's it. And we'll be having our babies uh, end of December and January. We'll start having babies, but Cody's got a couple of litters on the ground right now. Yes. And uh, I think Fluffy Carriers in, in Fluffy and Fluffy litter. Carriers, yes, because yeah, they're yeah, puppies. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.